everyone. Welcome to Counting on Math. In this video series, we'll be examining some common math strategies that kids are using in their classrooms. As we all know, math classrooms today look very different from when we were in school. And sometimes parents feel a bit lost when helping their kids with their math schoolwork. Our goal is to help you interpret and understand some of these newer math strategies, as well as the purposes behind them, so that you, in turn, can help your kids become successful mathematicians. We hope these videos provide some insight for you. Enjoy! When you were a kid and your math teacher taught you a new math trick, did you ever find yourself asking why? Did you ever hear, because you just do? If you were anything like me, that answer was pretty frustrating. You may have heard things like, just move the decimal, or just add a zero. But most of the time, there was no real meaning or value attached. We know now that teaching math tricks in isolation doesn't always work. For some kids, memorizing formulas may work, but for most, they don't stick, especially if we never attach meaning to them. I'm going to show you today how we teach these math skills with meaning and value, and nix the tricks. Let's explore a few of these tricks and how to add meaning to them. We'll start by multiplying decimals by 10. Let's say you need to multiply the number 4,500 times 10. Your teacher says, just move the decimal. And that makes your answer 4.5. Okay, that's pretty quick and pretty easy, but why does it work? Let's use graph paper to solve it. This graph paper shows six grids and each grid represents one whole square. Each square is divided into 100 parts in a 10 by 10 frame. We call each of these one hundredth. This is one hundredth, two hundredths, three hundredths, and so on. When multiplying 45 hundredths by 10, we need to represent 45 hundredths on the grid 10 times. Let's start with that. 10, 20, 30, 40, 45. That shows 45 hundredths. I need to do it again, so I'll use a different color this time. Now I'll start with 5 hundredths and do the next 40. 10, 20, 30, 40. This shows two groups of 45 hundredths. I need to keep going until I reach 10 groups of 45 hundredths. It will look something like this. As you can see, I've shaded 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 groups of 45 hundredths. Now let's look at this as all one color so I can see how much I've shaded all together. Now remember, each grid represents one whole. That means I have shaded one, two, three, four holes and 50 hundredths or five tenths. That is why our answer is 4.5. You can also say four and five tenths or four and one half. Now let's remove the grids and just look at the numbers. We started with zero and 45 hundredths and when we finished our number was four and five tenths. This does make it look like the decimal point has moved one place to the right to get this number. However, if you'll notice, the decimal point did not actually move. The decimal point is still between the whole number and the tenths place. It looks like it moved, but it really didn't. This is just a shortcut for quick calculations. Now, let's say you need to divide a few fractions like this. One half divided by one-fourth. And your teacher says, just flip one-fourth over and multiply. It's the same thing. You're multiplying by the reciprocal. When you do this, you can multiply the top numbers and the bottom numbers and then simplify to get an answer of two. This is a fairly quick calculation, but why does it work? Why multiply when I'm supposed to divide? Let's look at this with fraction bars. Here we can see that two halves and four fourths make up one whole. We can also see that two groups of one fourth 
make up one half. This is why our answer is two. Again, you can see that if we divide one half into groups of one fourth, there are two groups. That's why our answer is two. Visually, this is a great way to look at it, but if you're just doing a quick calculation, you can multiply by the reciprocal. Again, it's a math trick. It's not showing you the meaning behind your answer, it's just getting you there quickly. Now, you may remember multiplying two-digit numbers like this. You stack them on top of each other, and we multiply the ones place first. 4 times 5 is 20. We put the 0 in the ones place, the 2 in the tens place. Then we multiply 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 2, which is 12. Now, there's a very important step that you may remember having to do. Do you remember what goes right here? It's very important. A zero. Now, we can keep going. Next, we would multiply three times four, which is 12. I'm gonna put my two in my tens place. I don't need this two anymore. Now I just need to put the one from 12. Now we can do three times two, which is six plus one, which equals seven. Now all we need to do is add zero plus zero is zero, two plus two is four, one plus seven is eight. Our answer is 840. But why in the world did we have to put this zero here? That feels like a meaningless step, but if you don't do it, you may not get the answer right. Let me show you why that zero is so important to the meaning of the number. To get this number, 120, we multiplied 24 times 5. To get this number, 720, we multiplied 24 times 30. Next, we just added 840. When you look at it this way, you can see the value behind the numbers. When you look at it this way, you're just looking at an algorithm, and all this does is focus on single digits. It ignores the real value of each digit. We really need kids to understand this before they do this, so that they attach meaning to this very abstract algorithm. Remember, if you want to add meaning to these math skills, Answer the question why and nix those tricks. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.